Fresh on the heels of conference seasons, apparently Sir Jacob Fotheringham Thomas, Conservative MP for Borsetshire South, I'm not quite sure where that is either, but I think it's somewhere in the countryside, he is one to watch out for. So I interviewed him via Zoom, his Mayfair club, Swankers. That was, he was in the club and I was, well, here. I had to do it that way because the door staff won't let anyone in who isn't a knob. And I mean knob in the vernacular sense of meaning a member of the upper classes. So here we go. Is it working? I'm not that of a with modern technology. Not quite sure why you need to have this recorded. I used to be a journalist myself. Could you not just reach me via the telephone in shorthand? Stan would want to have this as part of their multimedia online presence. That, and to edit any bloopers into something for the Christmas party. Assuming we have a Christmas this year, I mean last year, your guy turned the place into Narnia. Forever winter, never Christmas. Well then, how'd you get on with Boris Johnson? My path rarely crosses with his being such a newbie, but on the few occasions I have met with him, he appeared to be most amicable. <laughs> well, that's one word for the man. Um, but anyway, as you just stated, you used to be a journalist for the Tory gaff, as did he, but for the Wolverhampton and District Express and Star, geez. Even the name of his work experience placement is verbose and roughly. So, what made you into the world of politics? Well, journalism was always something of a hobby. I wrote for the student newspaper, whilst the students, obviously, as a student. At Christchurch, Oxford. Correct. I collect words and like to find interesting ways to use them. That gave that passion output, but so does politics, and I find it could make things happen more so. According to my research, you studied PPE. Wasn't that a bit previous? Did you know there was going to be a pandemic? Were you invested in it in some way? I mean, no one spends three years studying plastic gloves for a laugh, do they? Or do they? Is there some conspiracy that needs its lid blowing off here? Heavens no. PPE is politics, philosophy and economics. So economics was my weakest hand of the three. The old brain box doesn't really grasp mathematics that well, you understand. Was uh, <laughs> well, quite a dunce in that department, I'm afraid. Were you influenced by your father being a politician? On some level, I, though I should think I should have graduated towards it anyway. Why? Due to the concept of uh, noblesse oblige, uh, privilege entails responsibility. And I thought I'd be good at it. Aren't you nicking that from David, let's text me mate Rishi Cameron? And Nanny? Oh, Nanny's an absolute angel. <laughs> Must be for putting up with me. Still in touch with her as it happens. She helped me campaign for my first election, which I've lost, by the way, in your neck of the woods in Smethwick. Oh, I know I didn't stand a goose for chance and it seemed to be labour for the best part of a hundred years, but it was jolly good fun. What? Because I knew. I wouldn't get in. I could take some proper time chatting away to the electorates. I couldn't understand the blasted word they were saying half the time, but it was a jolly good caper. A jolly good caper? Is that how you view politics? Well, no, uh, but I mean, I mean, so yes, it's, it's a great buzz and an enormous treat to have the privilege to represent the good people of Borsuch to South. But whilst in some respects it's a game, it's a jolly serious one. 
OK, you've stated that it's a privilege to serve your constituents, but you also mentioned a nanny and went to Eton and then Oxbridge. Would you not agree that you, in fact, exude privilege in a way that does not represent your constituents and are, in fact, a rampant example of privilege? There are all walks of life and social strata within South Bolsonaro, so no, rather, yes, I think I do represent them because they did, after all, vote for me. And I disagree with rampant. I'm sat down. A eh? rampant, it means on one's hind legs in its heraldic usage. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Everyone knows that, don't they? If they're born with a silver spoon and they've got army oh, mouth. Uh, so you described said representation earlier as a buzz. One of your colleagues, Michael Goh, was called out for having taken drugs during the leash campaign of 2019. Have you ever dabbled in any uh, substances? Split? Coke? Laudanum? Sorry to dash your hopes for a sleazy expose, but no, I'm damnably dull in that respect. As to your references to Gove, I think you'll find that any alleged drug taking was well prior to the leadership campaign, not during the event itself. Thank you for your uh, pedantic candour, but back to that leadership context, what are your political ambitions? any particular ministry you'd like to run. I'm guessing health isn't going to be too popular for a while, a ton of headaches possibly accompanied by newly recurrent coughing, lots of sense of taste and smell and other flu-like symptoms. <laughs> Foreign Secretary, Home Office, but even the big gig itself, number 10. Well, I can't possibly say this uh, makes some point in my career. And that's all down to my constituents. I find the most rewarding part of politics is simply being a good constituency MP, addressing the everyday concerns of country folk. So you're an apathetic, non-aspirational no mark, are you? Or do you have a more lucrative sideline that you conduct whilst on the time of the taxpayer, like your sleazeball colleague, Jeffrey Cox? That's not what I said, and I'm afraid I feel you might be hoping to uh, twist my words. A good constituency MP is a fine aspiration in itself, and no, I don't need a sideline. I'm already fortunate enough to be extremely rich and have the certificates to prove it. <laughs> Touché. They're not that safe though, is it anymore? I mean, forget about COVID. Are you still keen to meet face to face with people after Joe Cox and David Amis? Obviously, Amis was purportedly killed by a radicalised Muslim. There's no purportedly about it. The man's dead. I was referring to the radicalisation. I don't think we have uh, many of those thoughts in uh, South Borsetshire. It's a very uh, white community. Well, that sounds a bit racist, but uh, even so, not scared of a hacked off gamekeeper with a grudge and a blunderbuss or some such. My campaign was based on being a local man with local values. So no, I will be continuing my work with my electorate in my community. Brave or stupid, or maybe going to eat makes you think you're indestructible. But on that note, I see you've made a mad fuss about street lighting recently. Well, what's that about? Would you care to uh, <laughs> shed some light on that? <laughs> Touche. Here's the thing, there's all sorts of issues that go along with the level of street lighting. It affects the crime rates, people's abilities to sleep, the look of the neighbourhood, and would you believe it, fertility rates.
Yes, yes. Far more important than most folk reckon on is street lighting. Well, thanks for uh, illuminating me on that one. I thought maybe you had shares in a street lighting firm or something. Well, yes, I do, but I only bought those because I believe so strongly in their benefits. Are you sure you didn't violate any lobbying rules, Alla Owen Patterson? Certainly not. I stand by the rules from 1695, which state that bribery is banned, if you say so. I also see that according to your listing in Who's Who, you list your interests as tiddlywinks, duck herding, cricket, tree shaping and toy voyaging. OK, I've looked into this and was like duck herding is a bit like sheep herding, but with ducks. OK, toy voyaging is sending mocked up pictures of your toys on holiday, fake news alert, and tree shaping is a fancy way of saying topering. What's wrong with you? Isn't that a good enough word for you? Anyway, which of these is your favourite? Your level of research is most flattering, almost disturbingly so, but I love all of them, bar cricket, which I put in as a, a joke. They, they interview you for these things, you see, it's quite tiresome. I thought I'd better put something that was a touch more relatable. No, naturally, as stated, I support the Gloucestershire side, but my favourite would have to be tree shaping. To joy to draw up designs for the gardening stack, prune the greenery into all manner of shapes, Easter Island style heads, griffins, elephants. My own personal favourite was a commission of a bust of Baroness Thatcher, my own personal exemplar. Haplessly, that did entail the resignation of a rather left leaning head gardener. I wouldn't have by choice have employed such a pinko, but his, his work was highly recommended as beyond reproach was my pride and joy until someone set fire to it. Aforementioned sacked Pinko, I fear to suspect. Big Ted and I were most upset. Big Ted? Is that some bruiser you use as security? No, 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 my, my child will tell you Blair. Oh, I'm not quite so bad as that booze crazed cook Sebastian flight of brideshead who visited, though we are both Catholics. I don't carry the chap about with me on my person at all times. Look about me. See? See me big tent concealed about my person? What? No? No, of course not. Yes, he'd be. Yes, he'd be. Uh, He's tucked under the top sheet of my bed, as it happens. Uh, Nanny would have placed him there for his afternoon nap. Oh, excuse me, this is, uh, this is rather tiresome, but I'm uh, obliged to take a telephone call. That's what the uh, phone call's about. Nothing too serious, I hope. Unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to uh, disclose that information. Well, that's a bug. Oh, I mean, a pity. Uh, perhaps you're more willing to talk in a general sense about your personal life. You still reside at the family pile at Borsetshire Hall with your family. Forgive me if it sounds like I'm, I'm calling you out, but uh, you're a big boy now. Isn't it time you moved out and found your own digs? Well, I have a flat here in London, where I reside in the week whilst Parliament is in session. Are you sure you don't own a property in London already? Rent it out and claim you your work pad on expenses? Yes, no, quite certainly I don't. I travel back to Borsetshire on the weekends in order to hold constituency surgeries and generally put myself about attending local fates and uh, duck herding contests. And as you would have it, run around a big time with somebody going, you aim this way, please. Besides, Borsetshire Hall is steeped in history. It's not just like any old house. One doesn't simply ship out a certain age. Uh, right, so you live at home, are still in touch with your nanny, enjoy posting pictures of your teddy bear on tour online, and you're single. 
some people read those bare, sorry, facts and come to the conclusion that you're a bit sad. What would you say to these people? I would refute that claim. I'm actually quite a jolly chap as it goes. Any partner would feel like a mistress on the side to my main attention, parliamentary business. Mm -hmm. Not true of one of your ancestors, Sir Francis Fotherington Thomas, I understand. They held hellfire clubs in the ground of Borsetshire Hall, drinking and whoring aplenty, not to mention allegations of devil worship, or at least put the fear of God into some goats. Are you embarrassed by having such a licentious libertine as an ancestor? My, quite the uh, student of history, aren't you? It's hardly behaviour I would condone, but I find one has such limited influence as the actions of one's ancestors. I rather think that had any of the others displayed such imagination, I should be beholden to open the place of those sons of monkeys the National Trust. I must say, I, I find this modern fad for critiquing the past through the contemporary gazes at best misguided and at worst iniquitous. So, uh, would you say that you're against actions such as, say, the toppling of the Colston statue in Bristol? I believe there are better ways to make a political comment than by vandalising works of public art. Is that because you have slave traders in your own family history? No, I think you'll find that was the, uh, the Bristol branch of the... Uh, Fotherington Thomas is not the Borsetshire bunch. Really? Because <laughs> that was just a lucky guess come rhetorical question on my part. Speak them at all, do you know, the uh, Bristol branch? No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm afraid not. And is that because you disapprove of their having traded slaves? I'm afraid it's down to a more uh, prosaic falling foul of etiquette. Many years ago, one of them married out to an American, and she sent a letter home which composed on a typewriter. An utterly ghastly breach of etiquette. I, mean, I understand that might sound quite quaint to uh, 21st century ears, what with emails and this nonsense whidding through the ether at a rate of knots, but the time was considered decidedly non you. Non you? Or do you mean non EU? You were pro-Brexit, right, weren't you? But the USA isn't in Europe? Yes, I was and no, it isn't. Uh, forgive me, I, I draw the reference from Nancy Mitford. You like Nancy Mitford? Are you aware she's from a family of got complete Nazis, like one of her sisters married Oswald Mosley, another one more or less stalked Hitler? I am aware of the family's political proclivities, yes. Are you aware that another sibling was a communist? Were they? Well, it, it doesn't matter because the, the majority of them were, get, I mean, uh, disturbingly right wing. Uh, on to lighter matters. I can't help but notice that in photos I see of you, you're always wearing the same thing. Pretty much what you're wearing now. I mean, you don't smell off. So I guess, well, this is a Zoom call, but. You could be well ranked, but I take it you're not wearing the same items constantly. So is it that you bought a job lot on special or you just have the washing machine on at all times? <laughs> yes. Well, I found a style I like, I enjoy wearing. So yes, pretty much bought up uh, very similar items. Well, technically Nanny did the uh, purchasing, you see. I, I'm simply far too busy for that sort of thing, indeed. So I have to make the effort of deciding what to wear every day to save so much time. It's much like having a school uniform. Not really, though you must have really liked your childhood. First your nanny, now a fondness for school uniform. Is this a coded way of telling me you have some kind of kink? I mean, when I get dressed, I just delve into the sock drawer, pull out a pair that matches a shirt and that's it. What about at home? Ever kick back in a onesie? A what? I apologise, but I, I'm not familiar with your terminology. It's kind of like leisure wear. Sportswear. I've been occasionally known to have sported a cricket jumper. Uh, no, it's uh, all in one, like a 
kind of like a giant romper suit? Oh, no. No, no. Nanny had me out of such time many years ago. to interview me today from Grub Street. He was fun to string along for a spell, but quite hurt me by some of his comments. I'm a bash at my still being in touch with dear Nanny and sending Big Ted on fun adventures. Oh, Nanny. I wish you were here to provide counsel, but you're not. But you're here, Big Ted, aren't you? Because sadly for you, but usefully for me, you're not really in China walking the Great Wall. What do you say? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. That part of you used to wish you sound when I squeeze you appears to have given up. There's another damnable gentleman in the press. Uh, there are a few ladies present who weren't uh, quite so keen to give up. I took refuge in Swankers for as long as I felt reasonable, but they were still outside asking me about my recent promotion. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Someone who'd rather exploited Rishi Sunak's eat out to help out scheme last year, quite a large person now from what I hear, wanted to thank them in person, tripped over their laces, and quite crushed him. And uh, it doesn't seem like he's going to be in a fit state to do much of anything, so for whatever reason, I've been asked to step up. I didn't feel like I was allowed to say no. I made some general remarks, but the truth is I'm terrified. What do I know about money other than the fact I've got loads of it? I never had to worry about that sort of thing, so I have no knowledge of such matters. Such as the spectacles that have caused them to mistake me for John Major, suddenly propelled from apparent obscurity. But at least he got to be foreign secretary first. I could have had some travel opportunities and taken some real photographs of Big Ted with my box brownie. <sighs> no such luck. I didn't choose to be an MP because I wanted this sort of responsibility. I just fancied gadding about the place Lord Bountiful style, much as I suspect Sir Francis did. Now it sounds like I'm going to have to wear a bulletproof vest just to hold constituent surgeries. I don't like the idea of that. Completely ruin the line of my suits. Why can't I simply be placed behind some perspex screen as do petroleum vendors? So I lean back and decline the offer. Yeah, even worse. And there's word on the grapevine that uh, Rishi's uh, accident wasn't quite as accidental as it might appear. Johnson set it up in the manner of a revenger's tragedy in return for his, frankly, quasi-socialist spending. I mean, paying the public to sit at home, grunting up their bicycles, discounted dining out. It's the stuff Corbyn dreamed of. I don't even think Nanny can sort this mess out. Oh, shit. I'd guessed from the hordes of paps outside the club that something had happened, but I guessed it related to some other member. Why should I have thought it related to my guy? My take home. JFT doesn't give much away and is indeed a very dark horse and equally sinister force. Watch out for his ill doings. He We'll fuck you over soon. Like the man said on Mike, he's shit at maths. Tarara bit.